And we'll close up. We got about three minutes to finish this one. The Wisconsin Badgers. Absolutely love this. Uh, eight and five last year, five and four. Returning starters, they've only got three on offense, five on defense. As far as returning experience goes, number 95 in the country, number 10 in the conference. Over under is eight. Now, the over is even, plus 100. The under is minus 120. So they figure it'll be around eight. Head coach Paul Christie, he was 36 and seven at Wisconsin before the BYU game last year. He's now 42 and 12 in four years. That's still a pretty dang good record. I was just about to say. Uh, they absolutely shit. walloped Miami in the bowl game. Yep. When, you know, it, it, we didn't realize it at the time, but I mean, Mark, Mark Rick was... last game. Yeah. I mean, just destroyed him. Running back, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, right? <laughs> Jonathan Taylor football. Uh, 2,194 yards, 16 touchdowns as a sophomore. He is a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate. They lose quarterback Alex Hornibrook, but Chris will be the first one to tell you that quarterback inefficiency was the reason that they were ninth in the Big Ten in pass efficiency last year. Like Hornibrook was not that good. So quarterback Jack Cohn has the inside track to the job, but the fan base is absolutely buzzing about blue chipper Graham Mertz. Linebacker Chris Orr expected to be a leader on defense, but the Star of the defense is outside linebacker Zach Bond. They gave up 4.4 yards per play in 2017, and then that expounded or expanded or exploded, if you'd like to say, to 5.5 .5 in 2018. That was the 11th worst in FBS. Yeah, they used like, to be a team where they ran the ball and they stopped the run, and, and they they couldn't do it last, last year. year. They, they still ran, yeah, but they couldn't stop it. But when when people understood that, hey, this team cannot throw the football. They were able to get some stops. Yep. And, you know, when they couldn't stop teams on defense, there was nowhere to go. That's right. I think that they improve ever so slightly this year. Now, they went 7-5 and five last year, and it was like a disaster because, I mean, they were a top-five team. They were expected to compete for the college football playoff last I know, year. I had, I had them in there. And instead, they finished 7-5 and five in the regular season, and then they win the bowl game to get to eight wins. I think they get to eight wins in the regular season this year. The over-under, like I said, is eight. I've got them dead on the number. I've got them 8-4, and 5-4 and four in the conference. Uh, what say you? I got them 8-4, and four, and it won't surprise me if they finish with 9-3. and three. The four losses I have are all in conference. They're all against big teams. But, but if they were able to beat those teams, because they're going to show up for all four of those games... Would it surprise you if they went seven and five? Yes, that really? would shock me. Yeah, I think so. So teams, you're telling me if the if the quarterback position cannot get solidified, you think <sighs> it would surprise you? Maybe not. Now I'm looking at the games that I gave them wins for. Yeah, he. This might be the toughest schedule in the conference. It's it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, this like, this is the toughest schedule in the conference. I've my four losses that I gave them. Their, their are, conference schedule is is brutal. A, yeah, it, yeah, they play all of the best teams. I've I've got them losing. Penn State's off of there. Yeah, yeah, I said that. All the best teams. I've got them losing to Michigan, at Ohio State, at Nebraska, and at Minnesota. Right, those are my four losses. Now the wins that I gave them: Northwestern, Michigan State, Iowa, Purdue. And then, of course, we I think we both gave them at USF, but I don't think any of those would really surprise us. No, it, it's it's going to be brutal. They've, they've got five, six, seven, seven conference games, eight conference games that could go either way. I mean, really, you could. All, all their conference games except for Illinois are against the upper echelon of this conference. Yeah, I agree. It's a, I, it's I a tough schedule. Four. <laughs> you you might be right. They they could easily go seven and five. That's I've got them eight and four as well. I think that's probably why Vegas has the over under sitting at eight. Ah, what a what a crazy crazy division. So that is the Big Ten West. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. dot com. Go over to tunicatravel.com. dot com. Northwestern taking it down again. <laughs> back to back division champs. <laughs> we will be back with the Big Ten East. That's not the right one. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit some.
or your favorite podcast app, visit the website at winningcureseverything.com, or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.